It's that time. Yes, sir. Come on. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Let's go. Come on. Uh. We talk about bells and blues in here. Every week, talking fitness and how to get this favorite beer. They feature a brew every week. On top of that, give you tips on keeping your stomach flat. Look asleep. Jazz and Jim got you covered on both scenes. You'll be curling 16s and mastering your cleans. You ain't gotta listen to no one else. They mix fun with education to better yourself. What more could you ask for? Hit subscribe if you wanna keep your lift in a drink game live. You work out lacking, you die need help. With ball bells and blues, leave your worries on the shelf, yo. Uh, it's ball bells and blues. Yeah, it's ball bells and blues, yo. Uh, it's ball bells and blues. Yeah, with Chaz and Gene, you can't lose. Come on. Hey, welcome back. It's your boy Gene Baldy from Barbells and Blues. I'm sitting next to my cohort, like always, Chaz Dembrowski. What's up, Chaz? What's going on? How's everything? Everything is good. Listen, I'm back here with you, Paul Bunyan Fitness, hanging in Newtown Square. And we have another, this is episode three. Um, we have another night of talking about health so we can drink the beers. And we have another beer here that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So, how was your week? Pretty good. Hectic, you know? I mean, we, we, we both got the full-time gigs outside of this. So, you know, we uh, go hard and then we come here. We have a little conversation with some beers after we work out, of course. And uh, you hammer it home. Uh, listen, I, my wife would probably argue with you. Would probably argue with you that I have a full-time gig. She still is not really sure. <laughs> what it is that I do with my time. <laughs> she just doesn't get it. And I, I can't blame her because she usually calls me on like a Tuesday at noon and she's like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm at PJ Wheelhands. Yep. Are you yeah. eating again? I'm like, yeah. She's like, do you do anything? But listen, if your computer's up, you're working, right? True story. I, that My computer's always up. So you're always working. I am. And that's, that, it really is true. Like it's gotten to the point, it's so bad where it's gotten to the point where when I don't have my laptop up or I don't have my phone, I feel like something's getting by me. Like, and it's terrible. Don't get me wrong. I spend plenty of time with the kids. I, I focus on the kids, but there's always something going on in the background for me. And when I don't have that technology that I'm attached to, it's a sickness. Right? When I don't have that technology, I'm like, what's going to – because I'm so important that everybody's well, trying to get me every minute well, yeah. of the day. I mean, once, once you kind of leave the, the main focus to the side, you're like, all right, what's next? Or what's happening while my main focus is not the main focus anymore? It's you weird. Know? Cause, and you have so much th- being thrown at you on a regular basis from f- emails and texts and Facebook messages and uh, you p- subscribing to iTunes and podcasts. Going, you're constantly attached to that thing that when you're not, it feels weird. Like, you know that there's actually, a, 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 um, a, I don't want to, it's not a scenario, but like a, a, a symptom. Not a symptom. But you'll, I'll get, you'll get it in a minute. Where you know how when you have your phone in your pocket, you can feel it buzz? Yeah, the phantom vibrate. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a real thing, dude. Yeah, There's it's actually a real thing. What is it called? It's called something. There's a sick, it's not a sickness, but what, I'm trying to come, come up with I the right know, word. I don't know what the actual term for it is, but yeah. I've, I've heard that it's a legitimate thing. Dude, it happens to me all the time. Yeah. Hap- legit happens to me all the time. And it hasn't happened in a while. But like, I'll be standing at, the, at, at my counter cooking. And I'll be like, oh, my, reach into my pocket because it just buzzed. And I'm like, oh, wait, it's over on the couch. Like, my phone's on the couch. What was just buzzing in my pants? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> that, listen, I'm leaving it there. All right, so we're back in episode three. Today we are going to be talking. What are we hearing outside? You hear that? Is that the wind blowing? Probably the wind, yeah. That's wild. Today we're going to be talking to a, a brewery that's not really local, but more local than the than what we rated last week, which was from Belgium, right? The Duchesse, which if you haven't heard episode two, go back and check it out because that beer is off the off the charts. Yeah, good, right? we uh, we we rated it. Well, I rated it the yep. 9.0 based on its taste, flavor, profile, and price, price. was huge yep. for yep. there. Yep. So definitely go back and check that out for sure. Check it out, and this, I'm excited. So we created the 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 uh, the scoring system last week. And so I'm excited. This one is, I, I, I've had Omegong before. It's a brewery out of New York. Okay. And I've had it before. I what's it? Not, wait, what's the, what's it called? Omegong. 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 O-M-O-M-M-E-G-A-N-G. It looks like Omegang, but I think it's Omegong. This one um, is, a, is a Saison, so it's going to be a little, little bit lighter than that. Saison, yeah. Yeah. And, I'm um, a fan. Love it, love it myself. I'm a fan. Yeah, I yeah. like it. I got some good Saisons we'll be talking about. Over the next couple of weeks, for sure. But lighter this one's beer. Exciting. What is it? Lighter. Lighter than like 
Yeah, it's more of a blonde. Okay. You know, like it's yeah, it's more. I'm trying to think like an Allagash. Gotcha. Or a, or a blue moon, something okay. like yeah, that. Yeah, They're yeah. not say sounds, but it's like that. Yeah. That color, that 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 finish. Um, so I'm interested in getting into this. Um, so we talked a little bit last week. We finished. We finally finished the open. Um, you know, that's the CrossFit open that's going on. You know, we, we're CrossFitters. All we're, done. Back we, to the normal. All done, man. Normal I, swing of things. I'm always sad to see it go. You know how much I love that. Yeah, you do. You like I, it a lot. I do too. I, I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I I definitely like it better when people aren't competing with each other so much and you're focusing more on how well you improved in the years past but yep. yeah i mean it's a great little test of fitness each year yeah it's nice i like it um and we talked a little bit about jillian michael she called me this week by the way after we did the episode i'm sure she did she did not call me i'm kidding no um and so we talked a little bit about that and the uh, crossfit uh the, what she came out and said about crossfit this week this week i'm interested in learning from you i'm going to actually steal some free therapy time <laughs> and so here's what i mean by that you know, I am, let's go through my profile real quick. 40, I just turned 44, actually. Just okay. Had a birthday. 44 years old, father of two. I have a 14-year-old and 11-year-old, so I'm dealing with teenage girls, which is, if you're watching us on video, by the way, you'll see my baldness. It's because I'm married to a Sicilian, and I have two women in my house. The cat's a female two as well. Two women or three? Well, no, no, two. I meant my girls, so my oh, wife okay. and then the two girls, so really three. Plus the cat. Plus the cat's four. Man, my mother is always there. Listen, there's... I'm not. I'm starting to realize why you lost your hair so quickly. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. That and bad jeans. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my father was bald. Too. Okay. So, and although I don't think you get it from your father, my mom's father was bald as well, completely bald. But anyway, I started to take it to the wood. I can grow hair, just not a little, not a ton in the top. So you're getting a little bit of info on me. But anyway, I was five or six years ago we talked about i think we may have talked about this a little bit in episode one well we talked more about my journey but i'm, I'm really interested to hear about you and, and your your journey back to where you were and but also not only that but kind of where you're going from here yeah yeah because yeah, i need some i need some advice and i want to talk a little bit about why i'm not losing weight like i like i think i should one might say it's all the beer and wine and italian food i eat that might be a good I mean, start this is part of it but as is the moniker of the show I only come here to work out so I can do that stuff on the side. So, and if I'm being honest with you, I'm okay with a lot of it. But it's funny how when you start, when you actually get in decent shape, you can feel when you, you know when you feel like shit. I never knew that before this. Like, yeah, no, I get it. Completely. I always felt that feeling like shit was normal. So I had no, I had no basis. And then when I got in, like, so right now I'm about 190. Okay. That's about where I'm at. At my heaviest, I was about 215. But at one point, uh, back in 20, what are we in, 2019, so I would say about 2016, I actually got down to 167. Wow, okay. Yeah. And we did, the, we did a bunch of What's challenges your height? around here. What am I? I'm about 5'8". Okay. Yeah, about 5'8", right. with my stilettos on. All right. 5'9". Um, that's not true. Five, about 5'8", give or take. I think I could probably get 5'8 and a half, but I'm not pushing it. So five, <laughs> Every eight, inch matters. Which, this is, <laughs> I'm going to leave that hanging out there. Um, so... So yeah, so so here's what here's what played out. So back in uh, oh, oh, 2012, let's say, um, there were two things that actually collided. One was uh, my daughter, who was seven at the time, was sitting on my lap, and they got a chance to look like they were just kind of going around the house and looking at our wedding photos. And my seven-year-old said to me, she was sitting on my lap, and I work from home, so I'm a, I'm an IT guy. I am mar- in marketing. So most of what I do is on, from a laptop. So I'm not, my job is not, I'm not a bricklayer. It doesn't include much. You're not moving around. I'm not moving around. Yeah. No, other than going to somebody else's office. I'm not really doing any physical activity. Okay. So I was stagnant. I was 215 and, and I, and I didn't know I felt like shit, but I felt like shit. Cause when I look back on it now, I can tell. And she said to me, daddy, daddy, how come X, Y, and Z? Like they don't, it's funny how kids don't understand why they weren't at the wedding. Like, at that age, she was like, how come I wasn't there? I'm like, you weren't born yet. Like, how, that's not how it works. <laughs> you got to love that. that it's funny. It's, no, it's, yeah. it's funny when you think about it. It's like, it's it's endearing. It's like, oh, she doesn't get why no, she wasn't not there. And I'm not having that conversation not having yet. that conversation. <laughs> not for another, like, 10 years. Right? So she said to me, well, Daddy, you're going to be at my wedding, right? And looked at me. And I said, absolutely, sweetheart. But when I said it, I knew I lied to her. Because of mm. the condition I wow. was in, I was like, if my fat ass sits around like this for another 10 years, it ain't going to be another 10 years. Like, I just knew I was... That's real. It was real, dude. It was real. It made me really think. And it's funny because, like, 
my diet used to. I'm a Philly kid, right? So hoagies and steaks are part of my vernacular and part of my daily with lifestyle. The, with the soft pretzel on the side. Soft pretzel on the side. Pizza. I mean, you name it, right? And what I was, my diet those days consisted of me not eating at all during the day. And then at nine o'clock, I would get a cheesesteak, cheese fries, and mozzarella sticks and a, and a Pepsi. So, like, I was rolling down the wrong path, right? And that was the one thing. Then the next thing was so my sister had my goddaughter, Madison, and I want to say it was right around the same time. So, Maddie is about, what are we in? I keep asking 2019. So, Maddie's probably about eight. I know I'm a terrible uncle for not knowing her exact age, but she's in first grade. So, she's seven or eight years old. And around that time, um, my, you know, my wife is a doctor. So my sister had preeclampsia, which okay. is high blood pressure yep. while you're pregnant, right? And so when she came home from delivering Madison, she was nervous. My sister's like a very – we're opposite ends of the spectrum. She's nervous about everything. I could care less. So she says to my wife, I don't know what to do. And my wife says, I'll bring over my cuff, my blood pressure cuff, and we'll check it. She's like, okay, great. So we were over there one night just drinking and eating yeah, and hanging yeah, yeah. out with my brother-in-laws. All my brothers were there. I'm the oldest of six. All my brothers and sisters were there with their family. And my wife goes, hey, it's a party. Let's take everybody's blood pressure. Let's just go through. Yep, let's, let's do it. pump everyone up, right? Well, let's say mine was 180 over 120. And she almost had a, she almost had a stroke, right, where I should have been having a stroke. And I'm like, I named I had sushi there earlier today. Yeah, it's I'm stressed like, yeah, out. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 of course. Well, she freaked out. I let it go for another three days. And she's like, you need to go somewhere and take it. So I rolled down to the CVS, took one of those freebie things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one you slide your arm in, right? What's that? The one you slide your arm in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you hit the button, Mm -hmm. it blows up, right? And literally, it was like 192 over 130. And part of it was because I was nervous, right? So, of course, those two things together, I was like, look, something has to happen. So I hit the doctor. They put me on blood pressure meds, got it down. But I also coupled that with starting to eat better, mm-hmm. and that's when I came to the gym. Okay. So that's when I actually signed up here. It's crazy how both of our kind of oh shit moments were from looking at vitals like blood pressure. So what was yours? We talked about. We this, talked right? about this. Yeah, I mean it. It was it was around one fifty over at least a hundred at that point, and I was yeah. at the point. I mean I was in college, so for hey, a college young, kid man. to have that type yep. of blood pressure. Um, and, and going through my exercise science track at college, I had known at that point that that was not good. And so getting that done in college after stopping college sports, I, I kind of just kind of looked at myself and I was like, this has to change. And so it's, it's interesting how the, this, you look at your vitals because it's almost like you look at yourself and you're like, ah, you know what? I didn't gain as much weight as I thought. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Look Dude, at that. That came out strong. Mid, mid pop. I was taking, the, I was taking the, the, the time for while you were going through your story to open up the beer, and it really came off hard, man. I, I wonder if we're going to hear that on the podcast. Well, you know what? That might be a good time to talk about this beer. Well, I want you to finish because I still got to pour Well, no. So I was just coming thought. back to the fact that it, it's interesting how the, looking at ourselves didn't do much for us, but looking at a number taken from us was more of a hit than anything else. So it's just interesting from that fact that we can kind of differentiate the two and kind of separate ourselves from the visual appearance. And But as soon as we get a number in our head based off of a medical instrument, we're like, oh, shit. Well, it was that for me plus. I had my little seven-year-old beautiful little girl saying, like, Daddy, Daddy, you're going to be at my wedding, right? You know, and I'm like, dude, that's it was well. That to me was a, sh- a kick in the balls. And I don't have kids, but imagining that scenario in my head, and for you to kind of second guess that answer, yeah, that's a powerful moment right there. And unfortunately, if you uh, wait, hold on, I pour this beer. You do? No, 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 I'm just pouring the oh, beer. Like, God. I think it's funny we're talking about how As you she, pour scared, the beer. Yeah, she scared me Jeez, into fixing listen, myself here. Hold, let me God. let me pour this 11% real quick. Yeah. There you go. Top it off. Yeah, right. That's, that's, that's good. It's all how we are. All right, so I'm back. Sorry. You're back. I'm pouring back. the beer. So this, real quick, let's, let's talk about, the, let's talk about the, uh, the non-mentionables for this guy. So this is Omegang. That's the brewery. It's called Hennepin Farmhouse Saison. 
This one is 7.7 .7 ABV, a little heavier than the last one. And the IBUs are 24, whereas Duchesse was about 11. Can you tell me about the IBUs? What is that? Yeah, so it's so it's actually funny. I, I learned about it not long ago. We were at the local, we were at Firepoint Pub. So actually, we get into this. Every year, the gym holds the flag football game, right? Yeah. Which is fun because I won't mention his name, but we have a – an NFL quarterback who is our steady quarterback, which always makes it fun. Always right? makes things interesting. So it's so fun. So we have we have the somebody who comes comes here as a former Eagle, and he he throws the ball around, and it's just fun to watch. And it's fun to watch how athletic and and what kind of an arm like people like that are just freaks. He has an arm you can't even imagine until he throws it in your chest. Yeah, you know, and it's fun to watch that. So because he because you know when he's playing, he has to t scale back four hundred percent so he doesn't kill. So anybody. did you find did you find this? beer after that when you went to fire no no not the beer so the ibus oh, okay so, so when i learned, learned what that. it was yeah. we, we went to the it's the, usually right before thanksgiving yeah we played the game then a bunch of us from the game went over to firepoint okay and sat there and it ended up being a huge joke between a bunch of us because we were like and even still like if you see chief some of the guys in here yeah will be like what are the ibus on that because we had a, a fun you time had like a huge conversation about it yeah and it was fun because the bartender said to us like the ibus are low and all of us were like what so what is it it's an it's called it's an international bitterness unit. Okay. So right. it's how they scale the beer based off of the bitterness, and it has to do with the way with the way the hops are per part. Like there's. So what is this one? This one is twenty four. What was the last one we did? The Eleven. Duches, Eleven. Eleven. So and this I, is going to be more bitter. In I fact, believe that's the double case. the yes, amount I of think bitterness. So. Okay. I think so, and the only reason why I'm saying it like that is because I think that the higher the number, the more bitter it is. But I'm not a thousand percent sure of that. So it's going to be a good test. Yeah, We're going sure. to test this and figure out which way Absolutely. that goes. So let's let's t let's toast to health and fitness and good beer. Let's right? do that. And we hope like that if you're over. listening to us, you're doing the same. Yeah, if seriously. you're watching us on to video, you'll see it. So talk about the color of this thing. When I poured it, it looked yellow. It looks a little piss brown right now. Yeah, you know what? It, it uh, got a little darker as it sat. It did, right? That's weird. Um, the head was a lot bigger once you first poured it. It's gone down a lot more than I expected. Yeah, Yo, you know you know how to get rid of your head. How, how to get rid of the head? How? So it's so strange, but if you try this one time, you take the sweat off your nose. Okay. So like I'm wiping my finger on the sides of my nose, right. and then you and you twirl it. Yeah, I'm gonna. And I swear to God, no, I'm not. I'm not even lying to you. I'm gonna just drink my beer. You should just try I'm it. Drink my when, beer. You know when you get one and it's full of head, like and you're like, dude, I just want to drink this beer and I gotta wait 45 minutes. Yeah. That's what you do. You just go like this, get a little, get a little of the salt, and you go, Shh, and the head will go down. We we need our our, our brewers in here. We need to get them on. Cause I hope you're listening, Omagong and Sterling Pig and Levante. Seriously, get down here. We're gonna. You, you got to get in here and educate our us folk on, on this. So let's uh let's taste it. Go ahead, you taste it, and I'm gonna watch your face, and then we're gonna have to give it a rating after you consume. So we've created this rating system, a la Barstool Sports. If you watch uh, some of the pizza reviews, they stamp it with a review. It's a great video they do. So we're gonna we're gonna apply that. We're gonna steal that shit, and apply it directly to the beer game. So Chaz. Every week is going to come up with a number. They do zero to five scale, um, and he says everybody knows the rules. One bite, so everybody knows the rules of this one. Do they one do sip. it zero to zero to five? Yeah, I think so. But um, no, no, they don't. No, 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 no. no. I'm lying to you. I'm sorry. I thought they did a ten. Like, yeah, they do. Like do we 10. do, we do a ten yes. point scale. Yes, points included. We got to do the points. You know what I'm thinking points. about? It does fives untapped. Oh yeah, if yeah, you yeah. yeah. The they do out of five. Yes, yes. And Which definitely, we uh, like every week we do this. Download untapped. Get on there, um, get your beers on there, start to explore some ones that you haven't tried. What do you well, think? I, I like that. Yeah? It's got a little bite to it. A little bite. I would say the not IBU as, higher. Not, the not as much as I thought it was going to be based on the number you gave me, though. Okay, okay. But do you feel like it's a little bit more bitter yes, than the last of course. one we had? Yeah, noticeably. So, the, so then the higher IBU means it's got more bitterness. Okay. Right. Which makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Right? It's more so i i can kind of get where the the saison is coming in because if it was just like a blonde ale it might not be as but i can i can taste a little bit more of the bitterness in this and if it's almost fizzy yes did you, did you catch that mm -hmm. on your tongue yeah like slight almost, carbonation yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah for sure it's the, Which, it's really good what do you think what are we what are we giving this i want to i want i'm not ready yet you're not ready yet uh, no i'm not ready yet because i think i want to I like Omegong as a brewery. Like I've had their their um their farmhouse, I think, and there's a couple of them. Okay. Um, I, and I, uh, oh no, uh, uh, the Three Philosophers, I think, is the one I'm thinking about. And some of it's like really, really good. Like I'm, see, my thing is beer's getting so good. Like five years ago, local craft brewery was shit. 
Like you could you go to a spot. And you have it, and you're like, it's watery. They don't quite have the science down. Now you go to these friggin' breweries, and the beers are amazing. Like, we have so many here. And not only that, but the amount of breweries popping up yep. in, in any area is crazy, which I think tends itself to the amount of good beer that we have. I mean, the amount of places experimenting and kind of doing their own thing with the beer has only got to be better for the market, right? I mean, I think so. I mean, listen. Last last week, what did I give it? A nine, nine point zero. The Duchess, you Duchesse. went to a nine. I went to a nine. Like you started at eight, at eight, eight point eight, eight, eight nine. But I went nine. to I went to a nine because of the price. Yeah, you did. Yeah. What was this for the price? Same price. Same price. Yeah, I want to say it was eleven ninety nine for that. I'd have to double check. It's right in that wheelhouse. Okay. Ah, uh, you know, I'm gonna be in like the uh, like a seven point two. Really? Yeah. You think that one last week is that much better than this? I do. Okay. I do. I, I'm not challenging you. I think that's great. I do. I think that this is a great chill beer for sure. Yep. I think it lends itself to the, like the easiness of the drinkability for it. But it, again, this is also our own personal opinion. So wait, what did you say? Seven point what? Seven point two. So all right, let's talk about this. So this is pretty. That's pretty good. So I'm going back. And don't to forget, untapped. we got to come back to your story about. How you lost the weight and what you're when thinking was, about? Well, I was a big giant fat butt. That too. Yep. Okay, um, but from this brewery, so here's an interesting pieces, right? So inspired by brews of Belgium, we're we're on that Belgium trail, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. So it says it's spiced with coriander, ginger, orange peel, and gra- and grains of paradise. <laughs> its champagne like effervescence leads to a crisp, dry finish. Would I get you agree the with champagne. All that? Yep. I get the orange peel. Yes. And a little bit of the coriander. Okay. What I no, don't no like ginger? from breweries. So, yeah, a little bit. Not not too much. But you know what I don't like is when we get too artistic with our words. Give me an actual food item. Don't. What did you say at the end of that? Please read that back to me. Coriander, ginger, orange peel, and grains of paradise. Grains of paradise. <laughs> Give me a grain. <laughs> Me, so you don't like that. Be specific like that with your flair. grains so you I know like what the point is. No, I don't. <laughs> Listen, I want to know what I'm drinking and what I'm going to taste because if I taste it, great. If not, I'm a little confused. And so here's the other thing. This thing has 120,000 ratings on it at a 3.78 of a scale of 5. So if you double that, that's like 74%. 7.4. So I'm not too far off. You were right in that wheelhouse. You listen, said 7-2, man. I think we got to switch spots. I got to be the beer connoisseur, and you got to be you're, the health you're, and fitness you're, guy. Listen, you're going right. Listen, if, here, here's what I tell you. If you take over the beer connoisseur role and I'm left to do the fitness side, this show's over. <laughs> I don't know. i kind of be entertained to hear that. It would be pretty it funny. It would be actually. funny. Like, what are you doing to work out today? I'm lifting a pizza steak. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, all right, so let's get back, right? So this was a good one. I'm not, I don't know. I, I don't know yet. Like, I got to... I'm still not sure about about this one. I like it. Don't get me wrong. I like it a lot, and I, but I don't know if I like it closer to seven two or if I like it closer to nine zero. Really? I don't. It's not a nine zero. Okay. Don't get me wrong. It's no. I told you in the last episode, Duchesse is one of my top five. And listen, this we got we got to get back to the cans because that Mister Robusto from week one. You enjoyed I that? Love the artwork on the cans. So we got to get the back. The cans. There. Listen, the cans. That's a whole other thing because it's almost like a hobby. It's got to play. I would think into the rating. Okay. All that's right, what so, I think. And I truth. You you got to go to specific places to get the cans. Every can right now is an IPA. I I don't do IPA. I don't it's do the either. one beer I can. So we'll do some though, because we, we got to listen to our fans. And if they Absolutely. say do this type of IPA, we're going to do it for you because we we do it for you guys. Yeah, no, 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 and I'm with you. I'll do it. The problem with me is that when if I drink two of them, I have a headache the next day. Like there's no getting away from it. So I I don't I know gotcha. what it is. If there's a chemical in it, but it whacks me out. So I try to I te- I I like them. Like when I drink an IPA, they're delicious. I just know what it's going to do to me. Oh really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I like them all. I like everything, dude. I'm easy when it comes. Like people, like, what kind of pizza you like? I'm like whatever kind of pizza has cheese on it, <laughs> and even the ones without cheese, even I don't with, care. Yeah, tomato pies. Yeah, I care less. Um, all right, so going back to what we were talking about, because we are 23 minutes into this right now. Seriously. I don't even know how that happened. I'm sorry. We'll get it done. Yeah, no, no, we will. So what, what were we talking about before that we kind of sideswiped from? That was me so talking you were, about my you, fatness? Yeah, so you were going on about how you were getting to a point where you were starting to reevaluate yourself. You took the blood pressure. It was 180 or 120. You took mm-hmm. it again at the uh, pharmacy, and it was pretty similar. Yeah, it was a little bit higher, actually. And part of it is because I... I also have determined, as my doctor has, that I have white coat syndrome. So whenever I go into the office, it's always higher than it should be because I hate the doctor. You hate the doctor. No yeah. offense to doctors. I just no, can't stand I, it. I mean, it's a real thing. 
Dude, I'm not listening. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of nothing. You got you pull. You tell me I got to get a needle. I'm out. That's hilarious. Oh no, I actually ducked out the one time. They, she came in and she said, "I'll never do that again." But the one day I was there, I I started to get anxiety. So she came in and she was like, "We're gonna take your blood." And I was like, "Okay." She said, "I'm gonna send the tech in." She left. I left with her. She didn't see me. I split it. I split. No shit. Yeah, yeah dude, I was Are out. Are you Forget serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I've had my blood taken like four times in my entire life. And two of the times was because my dad was dying. I had to see if I was a, a, a bone marrow da- um, match. They forced me. They're like, your dad's going to die or you're going to get your blood taken. I'm like, all right. <laughs> well, like, I'm glad it yeah, took yeah, that. To, yeah, I had to. I, I mean, had to. There's, listen, I get it. It's, I hate it, dude. It's so funny. and I'm not, I'm not a sissy. I just can't do it. But anyway, so, so I think w- moving forward, like, we kind of jumped into the last five minutes. We can talk a little bit about where we're getting at. But my thing was I was going to get some free coaching from you. So – Diets end up being a big element of you. But yeah, I mean, look. Well, go ahead. You were going to say no, something. No, I mean, listen. There's no amount of, of running on the treadmill. There's no amount of Metcons. There's no amount of powerlifting sessions or weightlift sessions or hours doing bicep curls. You cannot out-exercise a shitty diet. You just cannot do That's it. That's a good way to put it, yeah. I mean, you can't. Like, and... In my experience, no matter what I would give people in terms of exercise, if you go home that day, and it's ironic we're sitting here with a beer, but if you go right. home five, six days out of the week and you don't act like you worked out and you don't treat your body the way you just did, you're not going to get to where you want to be. It just is, it's, not, it's not realistic. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And I think um, you know, we, we, we poke fun a little bit. Like we're, When we talk about drinking, we're talking moderation. You know, I'm not saying go home and drink a. You can work out and then go home and drink a, a case of beer. You know what I mean? That's not what we're talking about. We're like, the carbs for me kill me. I'm Italian, so pasta, pizza, bread, yeah. beer, wine, sugar. That's just part of life, yeah. right? So I used to tell people all the time, like, not that there's carbs in it, but cheese is uh, is in my bloodstream. If you crack me open, it wouldn't be red or blue. It would be white because I got provolone rolling around in my veins, right? Like, that's just how I roll. Yeah. But I've also learned over time that I have dairy murders me. Like, and I, like how? Like, I, what do you mean? So, again, going back to the, I always felt like I was feeling normal, but when I got in good shape, I knew I felt like shit. Yeah. So what I found out was we did, in 2016, we did that challenge here. And I went paleo. Okay. For three months. And I went from... You want to tell our view, our listeners what paleo is? Yeah, so it's a diet, right? Paleolithic era. It's based off of cavemen. You're supposed to eat like the cavemen did. Okay. So it's... Does it ex- what does it exclude? Uh, dairy, legumes, um, okay. carbs. So basically, whatever the caveman was eating at that time, yeah. you're eating. Okay. Yeah, like, I don't think... I'm not sure, but I don't think the cavemen were eating cheesesteaks. They probably weren't eating french fries. Probably not. Right? No. So they, you know, I got to, I, here's what, here's what the paleo diet is. The paleo diet is me eliminating every friggin' thing that I love. That's what it is. It's torture. But here's what I found out. <laughs> Three months of doing it yeah. and coming in here and working out, I went from, so at the time I was 215, I got down to about 181. Okay. And then I did diet in three months. I was down to 167. Okay. And all my numbers, my so what, personal 13, records. Th- that was a, that's about a, th- what, a 13 pound? How much? So was, what did I say? What's it, 14. 14 pound yeah, weight loss in three months? Okay. Yeah. But I got stronger. My reps got better. Like, you know, part of the challenge was you. it was it was to lose a percentage, like nothing unhealthy. Yeah. But also, there we did three different kind of movements. Like, I forget what it was. Like, you're clean. Whatever, and they and they gauged you. So I did it before I started, and then I did it again at the end of it. So like a pre-test, post-test kind of thing, where you're exactly yeah, you're seeing how you post test. Yeah. Yes, and I won the challenge. That's like awesome. I actually won the challenge. Yeah. It was great. But what I realized during it, first of all, let me tell you this: I it, like a pregnant woman craves whatever she craves when she's pregnant. I wanted an Italian hoagie, like I I could have I could have robbed Peter and beat him with something just to get an Italian hoagie. Like while I took that out of my world, yeah, I. I just, all I wanted to do, the finish line for me was a giant, the best giant Italian hoagie I could find, yeah. right? And I remember when it happened, and we can bring my wife in on one of these podcasts and she'll tell you because I think she remembers That'll be it. amazing. One Friday night, I finally did it and we went to Lorenzo's and I got this giant, we had 78 pounds of ham on it. Like it was just heaven. And I've, I murdered this thing. And literally within 10 minutes, I was like green. Like, curled up in a ball on my couch, 
And she's like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I feel awful. Like, I feel awful. And she's like, what do you think it was? You think you're sick? And I'm like, I don't know. It could have been a bug. Maybe it's a bug. I don't know. But I said, I, I'm one of these guys. If I think something did that to me, yeah. I revisit. Of course. Like, I'm not one. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, like I'll never do that again. I'm like, no, let's do that again. Well, let's, let's do this experiment. Let's see if it was that that screwed me up or exactly. let's see if it was something else. And I did it the next week and the same, same thing. thing happened. Yep. And so it, it was it was a combination of the things. It was the processed meat, which is awful. If you don't know what an Italian hoagie is, hit me up because if you're from the West Coast, you might not know what that is, right? That's, That's a Philly thing, yeah. I think. So if you don't know what a hoagie is, it's just a bunch of processed lunch meat with tomatoes, lettuce, onions, olive oil on a roll. Whatever, and with some cheese. And so over time, I started to realize that any time I ate dairy, I felt like crap. It, sl- it made me sluggish. It slowed me down. I had a pit and in the, my stomach. And, the, and you doing the paleo diet excluded dairy? Completely. Okay. It was gone. So, and when I reintroduced it, I re- so here's what happened. I, I pulled it out. I felt like I could conquer the world. When I started adding things back, I started to realize what made me feel like shit. And, and, and dairy was a huge element of that. And that's, that's my frustration. I mean... And, and listen, I'm not a registered dietitian. I am mm-hmm. not a nutritionist by any means. I don't have mm-hmm. that. I have a bachelor's degree in exercise physiology. And so I am in no way, shape, or form able to give nutritional advice. But in my experience, the issue is when you start to screw around with diets with weeks or months long and you go back to how you were eating beforehand, you're, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. Right. You are. And the issue is that... You get to a point where you say, okay, I'm going to do this six-week challenge. And I'm not knocking challenges. Challenges can do an amazing reveal for you because they can expose what you're doing wrong. It did for me. Exactly. And it can And it can encourage you what you did right. Yep. But when you start to go back or you decide you want to go back to how you were before you did this, yep. you're going to see some issues with it. And that's kind of why I, I'm, I'm, I'm on my little high horse here, but – when we talk about the word diet and we get into certain time lengths of changes that we want to make to ourselves, we really are setting ourselves up for failure yep. for the small percentage of people who like that. And that encourages them do it. But yep. you got to understand that it's the lifelong changes you make yep. that will keep you on the right path going forward. So I, I love the way you put it because what I found is that you, if you, do a challenge and you do something that's drastic like that, that shit's not sustainable. So you're only tricking yourself into thinking, okay, I got, I got so much better. So, th- all right, let me, let me try to put it in this box. You, what's the matter? What are we looking for? I'm good. Yeah. No, I'm good. Oh, okay. Yep. You were looking around like no. you dropped, like you dropped your wallet. So for me, I'll try to put it in this box. I know that if I was to go out and do a water fest, Right. For the next three days, I'd cleanse my system. It would feel awesome. I'd be down 14 pounds, feel like a king. But then the minute I put a French fry in my mouth, seven of those 14 pounds would be back. Can we also just understand that, like, the fuck is a water fast? That's another show. For real? Like, what What do we know? I'm, I know what a water fast is. but oh, like, you do, yeah. What? Why? All right, so listen. Episode four, why? How about that? Because that, we can go into that all day. Because I know people that do it. And it's like being on ayahuasca. Like and here, and, and that, and you'll you'll catch me getting a little upset and kind of going on my little rants that I, I might end up doing. But, like, wh- why? Like, at what point do you realize to yourself, if you start to cut out entire macronutrients, whether it's a carb or a protein or a fat, yeah. it, it's not sustainable. No, that, well, that's, this is, so two things. This is where I was going. So the water fast, for me, is a reset. And I don't say for me because I've never done one. I've actually talked to my doctor, and my doctor is like, please do not do that because of, because of what happens to your liver and because my blood pressure is high and the medicine I'm on, the combination of that, what goes through my kidney, like she, whatever, she rattled this shit off. And I was like, I can't even deal with this anymore. I'm just not going to do it, right? Like that's, I yeah, question, of can I do it? Does it make sense? And I'm, gla- I know- and, I'm gl- and I'm glad your doctor was the one basically saying no. Yeah, no, 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 she's, she's on it. For the most part. Like, I, I like my doctor. She's cool. I don't like... She's too well on me. She wants me to do too many things. Like, for me, it's like, look, I come in next year. You take a little bit of blood. I don't have cancer. We're done. Like, that's the end of my story. I don't need you talking to me about, you're seven pounds overweight. Yeah, okay. That fluctuates. I could care less I about that. Right? Like, I don't... I'm 44 now. 
I don't. I hate having my teeth clean, but I do it every six months because it's required maintenance. Like, but but the, but when I'm in there, I don't need you having me stick around because you want to do extra work. So after work. after she said no to the water fast, I can't even right. say it without getting heated. But go ahead. No, no, no. But no. So here's so I, we. I think we took this a different path. The water fast for a lot of people is a, is a body cleanse. If you read about it, there's certain things that happen to your body that flushes all the. Toxins These are the out. same people probably. I know people that do it. Popularizing it. fit tea and all that other crap too. <laughs> Listen, we could get into this whole day. Yeah, no, no, we can talk about this. And I love the fact that you get agitated because I think part of my job here is going to be to really agitate. That's fine. Yeah, you yeah, know that's good. And we and, and 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 when we do a, a, a wonderful um, registered dietitian, um, Kristen, who is our gym's dietitian, yeah. we're going to bring her on and pick her brain at the, at the molecular, molecular level Oof. of basically what our food does to us at that type um of level um and so she'll be able to give more detailed information for that but yeah for sure go ahead yeah yeah no so i I was thinking like i don't even know i'm sorry i even mentioned the water fast because we went down a different path but what i was trying to say going into it was when i pulled all those things out Mm -hmm. i i know that when you do that what i did for the paleo was not 100% sustainable for me as a, as a livelihood. Okay. But what it did for me was make me completely and acutely aware of what my body likes and what it doesn't. So if you said to me today, I need you're going to win a million dollars. I need you to lose 18 pounds in the next three weeks, feel like a, a, a million bucks, and increase your, your PR at your snatch by 10 pounds. If you do those two things, you win a million dollars. I would have it done in way less the time than that because I know the formula that it takes to get me back down to 167 from where I'm at. Why don't I do it all the time? Because it sucks. Because I enjoy fucking pizza steaks. Like, you get me on that? And the, that might not be and, – and you getting to that certain number on the scale is not an indicator of a goal for you. No, 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 but hold on, hold on. I only say I, I, I get what you're saying, and I think your point is 100 percent valid, and it's not about that. What it, what it is about is how I felt at that level. It included, it included my weight. Yeah. It included the way I looked at myself in the mirror. Of course. It included the way my, my pants fit. It included the way I was eating. It included my energy level. It included how my business was going because things were going right. It included my relationship with my kids because it was better because I was more l- lucid. Mm-hmm. like. All those things. In just in my head, it be, it's represented by that. Which number. is amazing. The fact that you could take individual aspects of your life and evaluate them towards what you're eating and how you feel is what I feel should be done more so than anything else. But do you know why it's not? I, I, I have, the, I have the, the market cornered on this. It's amazing that if you've never gone through something like that, like, think about what I told you. My kid challenged me. I was forced to focus on death for a minute, not being there for them to get married. My blood pressure was really high. My wife freaked out. I had to go to the doctors. I knew I had to do something. I did it. And going through all that trouble, and then I sacrificed to get to the gym literally six times a day while I was doing P90X in my basement those days. So I would come to the gym six times a week, and I would do four days a week of P90X or running. Which is totally insanity, right? It was so stupid, but it made me feel great. To get to go through those levels to do that was so difficult, right? So, but what I was able to see was at 215 with 180 over 120 blood pressure, I felt no, quote unquote normal. Yeah. So if you've never gone through the trouble to get to a point where you were at your physically best, how would you know that your normal isn't shit? You're right. You follow me on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Like, I know I took that a roundabout way. But until I got to 167 and I eliminated the stuff that made me feel like shit, and I felt phenomenal, I didn't realize I felt like shit. Right? Like, I thought it was normal yeah, no, for me I, to be sluggish. I, yeah. And I'll give you a great example. And we find comfort in that. Like, I mean, let's talk about that mentally. Well, it's like, easy. It's easy. It's easy. And you, you find yourself in that position where you're like, okay, I know I'm overweight. I know, I know some numbers are off. I can lose the weight and I can do this to a certain point, but for you to push yourself and know what it takes and also how you feel at that point is what opens people's eyes to getting quote unquote healthy again. Yeah. 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 Because you always thought you were healthy until you realized you weren't. Mm -hmm. 
And yep. then when you do realize what healthy is, you're, so I'll give you a story, right? I'll try to bring this to real life, and then I think we could probably wrap this up. But cause we're running long on this one. I hope people are still listening. I'm sure they are. Because this is a good story. So my wife and I, like other people, went through tough times. And we, you know, as the kids were getting older and we fought and bashed heads and we fight. She's Sicilian. So when we fight, we fight, man. Like she's, she's a brawler, you know. And she's she's brilliant, strong willed, like just and I you know, listen, you know that's my foxhole. Buddy, I do. I, I'll yeah, kill people for that course. lady. So it's it's you know that's how we roll. But we went through a tough period in our marriage, and while I was, it, it coincided with this movement that was going on. And I'll tell you what happened. She would always be on my shit. Like I would look at it and be like, stop busting my balls about stuff around the house i work hard right like that was my thing all the time just please stop bitching bop, bop, bop in my ear i'm done with it like that's some of the stuff we would argue about and so during the paleo challenge and a little bit afterwards christmas time came around and christmas time around my house is extremely stressful because it's a big deal for the kids for my family we do we do every year we do uh, kids Pollyannas like last year was the first year we didn't do it with the kids we cut the kids out of it all the kids are old enough where we kicked them out kicked them to the curb it was adults only but we've been doing it for about 15 years so it's a big deal it's expensive big deal so come December 1st my life would get turned upside down because my wife would start with everything lights gotta go up these things happen take the bins out right <laughs> I mean dude I could go we could spend a whole show on things I have to do at Christmas and it sounds so ungrateful but you'll get what I mean and so the year I was, that year that we did the paleo and I was crushing the whole game, which as I talk about it, it makes me want to do it again. We were getting ready for the party and she was working and stressed to the T's. And I remember towards the end, she was freaking out a little bit. We were about two days before the party and she's like, I just don't know what I'm going to do about the basement. Because the kids come, we throw them in the basement. There's 40 kids running around my giant basement like nuts. So it's got to be in good shape. She's very particular about the way it looks. Yeah, of course. Right, you get it. You have a wife. You know what that means. So, so we do it. And I, and you know what I did is that day I got off the couch, stopped working, shut everything down, went downstairs. It literally took me an hour to clean the whole basement. And I hit it. Spick and span, spotless. And I said to her on the phone, it, she, so she was working that night till 9. And it was literally like the next day she had to work again and she was freaking out about it. She stresses about how am I going to get this done, right, in time. It's never going to be ready in time. That's our thing. And so I said to her, I called her, and the basement had already been cleaned. And I said to her, well, what do we have to do tonight? And she said, I don't know. we got to look at this basement. I don't know what I'm going to do. It looks like a And hurricane you're probably hit thinking it. in your head, like, it's already done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was, yeah, I was playing it out. Yeah. I was messing yeah, yeah. with her because I wanted to surprise her. And she came home, and she said, now what? I said, let's go down and assess. Like, let's you and I go look yeah. and see how long it's really going to take. And when we hit the bottom of the steps, she lost it. Like, just waterworks, man, crying, right? And I'm getting emotional right now thinking about it. And I thought to myself, you fat piece of shit. All the contention in this family forever is because you were a lazy fuck. And you sat on there, and you were unhealthy. And look at all you had to do is spend one hour. You felt good. You had a little bit of energy. You cleaned the basement like a stupid ass. And your wife is more grateful than she's been in four years, you stupid asshole. And I thought, holy shit, dude. This thing is completely based around my health. My health and, and my mindset is completely drives everything I do, including it's all connected. my relationship. It totally is. It's all is. connected. But I didn't know that. Well, you know like, now. I'm, smart, I'm a smart dude, bro. Like, I'm not, a, I'm a, not an idiot. And and for me to be 40 years old or whatever I was, 38, to figure that out, I should apologize to her for the first eight years. I like <laughs> was a fat fat ass on the couch, you know. But it was weird because she used to nag me because it was it would take six and a half months for me to change a light bulb. But it was because I was sluggish and slow and I didn't do anything proactively. I did it because she bugged me. Yeah. Where in this particular scenario, I felt good enough. I'm like, let's, dude, I'm running out of shit to do. You know when remember you remember the old movies where somebody was all coked up. And they would clean the whole house and run around. That's how I felt. Like I'm, I got energy, bro. What, what can I clean? I'll do the. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the car. I got. I'm, I'm cleaning my rims on the car. And it was all based off of how you felt. Good, good diet. And how you ate. Crushing the game. And you working Confidence out. Confidence level growing. And everything. Everything. Yep. It's connected. It's connected in more of a way than I ever really thought it would be. 
Re- really, I mean, it really shocked me. And I probably shouldn't have. And I'll tell you, we can go into this another time too, but I had a coach and the guy said, what are the three biggest things in your life? And I said, business, family, and health. And he said, okay, what do you think drives all the rest? And I said, business, no doubt. And he said, why? And I said, because if I'm making money, everything's good. And he said, really? He goes, I guess you're paying me, right? I said, yeah. He goes, will you listen to me? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, just listen to me for a month. And if I'm wrong, you fire me, we're done. And I said, okay. He said, health's first. And watch everything fall in line after No that. matter how much money you make, no matter what is going on in your life, if you're not healthy enough to be there and be present in the moment, then what's the point? What's the point? So here's the best quote I ever heard. You ready? And I think we end it here. Have you ever seen a fat lion? No. Right? Who's the king of the jungle? The lion. So why aren't they fat? Because they're always on the move, on the prowl, or eating the right shit, doing the right stuff, and they run that shit. So if you want to be a lion, get your shit in line. Right? Yeah. Like, think about that. That drives me in business. How, how, have you ever seen a fat lion? If you got somebody that's controlling the jungle, that dude has got every aspect of his shit together. Yeah. Including, including health and fitness. Of course. Right? You ever want to run from a lion? Would you? Would I run from a lion? Would you want to run from Absolutely a lion? Absolutely not. No, because you know what's going to happen? They're going to eat you to death. So now what I do is when I'm set up like that way, I think about it. How do I become the lion? In my business? In my health? With friends? Yeah. In the gym? Be the lion. Be the lion. Stop being a fat ass. All right, so listen. We are 45 minutes. I love it, thing. though. It was a good it one. It was a good one. I think it was a good one. I hope, I hope if you stuck around and listened to it, drop us a comment about just say. Tell us your journey. Like, share with us. Tell us. Because we know that there's other stories out there. And we know that, that Gene isn't the only person in the universe who's had this, had these struggles and have these, these Stop difficulties. Stop that. I am too. You are? It's all, this was about this me. This was all about Don't you. Don't take this Sorry. from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gene's therapy hour with beers. Listen, we didn't even get into micros and macros. We're going to have to save that for another one. I was going to try to pick your brain about the science behind well, listen, it. Listen, sometimes we'll you it. just you need to tell your story. That's true. All right. So, listen. Episode three is in the books, my man. And we say to you, cheers to your health and your fitness, Cheers to your health and your fitness.